being cheap. Yeah, uh, it's been a while since I've said that. Uh, like a week, a whole week. It's strange how much you miss making videos. I mean, I know it's a pain, especially when uh, I drop my camera and I think I've chipped it. So I'll find out when I edit this video. So I apologize if you see solar blasts from the chip camera lens. So yeah, sorry about that. So um, it's great to be back. Uh, really looking forward to this year. Got lots of ideas. Um, yeah, got lots of ideas and hopefully they're gonna come to life in the form of video and alcohol. What more could you want? So, we're doing part two of the Shiraz style wine kit. Bit of an experiment, and I wanted to see how it would turn out. Since normal grape juice, if you just put the grape juice in and add the yeast, it comes out horrible. I mean, it's really, really bad. Um, it's like a very, very cheap wine. Um, yeah, that's all I've got to say on that. Cheap wine, not good. So, we took extra grape juice and concentrated it down ourselves. So, it actually worked out pretty cheap just took a bit of time. So if you've got the time and the patience, give it a go. If you don't, add in the concentrate. It does the same thing. So, uh, pretty much. So, we, uh, so before us, what we have are six bottles. They have been sterilized, cleaned, and rinsed. Uh, the insides are immaculate. I've got one bottle here which is slightly tacky on the outside from a previous label. I recycle my bottles. I mean, it's, it's a hazard. I can always clean it later, but this one's for cooking, I've decided, so it doesn't matter. Uh, I've got myself a glass, so we get to try it. Uh, I've sterilised the worktop, sterilised everything, and I've even taken the time to uh, write up some labels in advance. Almost like I know what I'm doing. So, um, yeah, let's get on with it, really. So, um, as you know, these are for my new subscribers. Thank you very much for subscribing. I hope you'll learn something and have a bit of fun along the way. So, I don't really use a lot of additives. I will use yeast nutrient, and if I'm putting something on pulp for a few days, I'll use a Camden tablet, but in general, I don't really use a lot of other stuff. It's, I do a more hybrid of traditional and modern. I can mix up. It works rather well. Works for me. I've never had a failure, and uh, yeah, it's cheap. So that's what homebrew is all about, and tasty. So, you can use stabilizer. Add one teaspoon per gallon of this, you know, take it out, put it in a glass, mix in a teaspoon, then pour it back in, and carry on your merry way. But I'm not going to use that. I'm just putting it out there that you can. So, what we're going to be doing, putting these in the bottles and tasting it. Oh, yeah. So it is going to be quite young, so hopefully it was going to give us a rough idea of what it's going to taste like once it's aged properly in the bottle. Maha. So, um, yeah, let's, let's get on with this. So as you know, I'm going to be siphoning, so I'm going to be using my tiny little tube. And I'm using my tiny little tube, which is massively too long, but it's going to do the job. Uh, mainly because it comes out slower, but it's going to mix up less sediment. You can use a proper official siphon tube, but yeah, I just use whatever I can get my hands on. So these bottles are going on the floor, and uh, it's going to make a good siphon connection. So I might as well just chuck these on the floor. Three, four, five, and six. So just before we start doing the siphoning, I got myself a clear bottle so we can actually see what it looks like. Because the green glass is great, but, you know, we want to see what it looks like in a clear one. So on we go, move this very carefully. It has been sitting on its sediment, which some people say you need to remove it because it really makes an off flavour. But unless you're doing a really delicate wine, it should be fine. It smells really good, actually. It smells very rich and fruity, just on the, the smell. Now, I'm not going to degas it, because I do the degassing in the bottle. It works. It works for me. I mean, each to their own. If you want to degas it before, you can. But since uh, some people really, you know, don't like oxygen, it seems it works better to put it in the bottle. And it also makes a little bit of a carbon dioxide atmosphere. So to start a siphon, so, I was so rudely interrupted by my camera running out of space. Lame. So, like I was saying, to make a siphon, uh, funny enough, 
all you got to do is take the end of your tube, make sure there's some solution, just tilt this slightly since we're nearly done and I only just noticed, and then just give it a suck. Put your finger over the edge. Ooh, that's really tasty. And then just lower it into your bottle. Like so. Since this is nearly done, just getting the remainder out, because I don't want too much sediment in there. La 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 la. Unfortunately, you're always going to get a little bit of waste. Fair enough. Looks rather nice. So, put this out of the way. Now I'm just going to bring up the bottles. Lovely. So, here are my lovely bottles. So, now I just go ahead. I take my rinsed and clean. So that one, I believe, came on that one. Yeah. Then I cut the steak. That's why I leave these bits on, so I can line them back up as they came off, roughly. Turn is road. Let's have that one. That must be the highs. So. Here we have, just put this inside, this was the last bottle that I did, six bottles of wine, there's a little bit of wastage, that's just how it goes, there's going to be a little bit of sediment mixed in with the last bottle, so usually the last bottle is the one that you use for cooking, or you know, you just let the sediment sit on there, and this is how it goes, very small amount of sediment, it's fine. So. Here is our bottles of wine. I mean, they are in the proper green bottles, as they should be, uh, to keep the light off the wine. They are really dark. Really dark. Looking like awesome bottles of wine. I mean, these are... Yeah, they're, they're really quite nice, actually. So, what we're going to do is we need to degas the wine to shake up the bottle. and then give it a, you can hear the last little bit of gas coming out. Now we're going to do that with all six, uh, probably a couple of times. And the reason we do that is it pushes the oxygen out and it leaves the carbon dioxide in an atmosphere, since you've got to open the wine to air it, because it's a nice wine. So, I suppose this is the moment of truth. What does it taste like? Now this was the, uh, like I said, the last bit that came out has a little bit of sediment in there, but it's pretty much crystal clear, even with that small amount of sediment. It's got, yeah, it looks quite good. You can just see through it, so that's pretty good. It looks like a nice wine, and it smells like a nice wine. It's very, um, it's kind of berryish actually. The red wine yeast that we used really did um, help bring out the flavours of the berries which weren't there but grapes let's give it a taste wow wow that is um that is really really tasty so so much so I honestly don't think it needs degassing mm. Maybe very slightly. Wow. That is really good. Now this is a young wine, I'd like to point out. This still needs a couple of months of aging. To be on the fair, the longer you age this wine, the better it's gonna get. It's not a kit wine as such. It is, but it's not a kit wine as you buy in the shop. This actually does get better with age. So, wow. <laughs> um, guys, try this one. This is good. It doesn't taste like cheap piss. Mm. Now, does it taste like a Shiraz? Because we did add in the pepper for a light bit of spice and it's got a good body to it. It's medium bodied, it's not a heavy body. Funny that since it's not pitch black. But it is a medium bodied wine. It's not a Shiraz. It is a Cabernet Sauvignon. Possibly a very poor Merlot. 
if you want to, you know, go down that route. But it's wow. This is um, getting a bit of oxygen just to make sure. This is very, very pleasant. Now, okay, this is a Cabernet Sauvignon. Medium bodied, well rounded, fruity. It's got a back end of a tiny bit of spice, like really small amount. So, it's possibly a very, very poor quality Shiraz, but um, it is a very good Cabernet Sauvignon. And considering that we made this kit for 11 pounds, I've, I've made wine kits. Um, back in the day, for, and I used to pay 20, 30 pounds for, and um, didn't come out as nice as this. This is very, very pleasant. Cheers! Wow. So, with a bit more aging, this is going to be a fantastic uh, well, wine. I mean, it really tastes nice. It's got the fruit notes to it, it's got body, it's got the tannins, I mean it's even got a tiny bit of spice in the background. It is like a very nice bottle of wine. If I was going to buy this bottle of wine, um, to be fair, I'd probably pay it around a tenner a bottle, which is about, you know, a half decent wine. It's not, um, you know, we spent £11 and got maybe a 10 15 pounds bottle of wine. And it still needs aging and finishing up. Just a little bit, I think. A couple more months, and this is going to be lovely. So I am, uh, again, I am pleasantly surprised. It is not a Shiraz. It is a Cabernet Sauvignon. But um, it is a very pleasant, nice, easy drinking thing. It is very, very pleasant. I am going to enjoy this bottle of wine quite a lot. And then that bottle of wine probably that bottle of wine and I'm probably giving those away but either way this is a fantastic outturn outturn turnout that's it it is a fantastic turnout the red wine yeast worked beautifully the concentration of the grape juice worked fantastically um, all in all it came together to form a very nice wine which is what I was after okay I wanted a kind of spicy full-bodied Shiraz but Ended up with a Cabernet Sauvignon for 11 quid. So if you went out and spent 11 quid, you could make exactly the same thing. And that is fantastic. Um, most of the times you can't even buy a Demijohn for 10 quid. So, uh, you know, 11 quid. That was it. 11 pounds. That is freaking awesome. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my labels. Drink some more of this wine. This is really good. Wow, this is going to be a doozy of a wine once it's finished aging. And I'm going to apply the stickers liberally. Oh, yeah. And I'm just going to leave it as red wine because I think I have just found my go to uh, recipe for making a red wine. I've made, uh, you know, using grapes. It was funny that. That was uh. Ooh. That was freaking awesome. I am uh, very pleased. Very pleased indeed. So, there's my bottles of wine. Oop. I'll even put one on this one because I'm feeling good. I'll stick it there. It saves me cleaning that little bit. Six bottles of wine, eleven pound. Frickin' awesome, man. Frickin' awesome. I think we're gonna have to do this one again. So, thank you very much, guys, for subscribing and watching. It is. Well, just making this wine has been a pleasure. I wouldn't probably have done it without you guys supporting me. So, thank you very much, and uh, yeah, I, I think I may have to uh, sample a couple of bottles and try not to drink it before they have aged.
properly. So we're going to do a tasting video of this in a couple of months' time. So I'm just going to try not to drink it and leave it to one side. So cheers guys, and I will catch you in the next video. So take care, have a good one, see you later.